You're listening to REI USA Podcast, your prime resource for genuine real estate growth. If you want to jumpstart your real estate career, whether in active or passive investing, this is the right show for you. Join professional home renovator Stacey Rossetti as she talks to REI USA teachers and expert investors willing to share their tips and tricks to get started in investing, sharing actionable advice in every area of real estate, all while putting legality, habitability, and safety above everything else. Combine their unparalleled advice with your strong drive for success, and that incredible real estate fortune will be yours. Now, here's your host, Stacy. I'm Stacy Rossetti, and I've been teaching uh, people how to invest in self-storage for about eight years now. And uh, I, I typically invest in uh, self-storage and I do teach uh, how to get started in self-storage investing on um, the first Tuesday of every month at five o'clock Eastern, right? So I'm Tuesdays, every other Tuesday is when I teach. And I also teach the beginner real estate investors, which is, um, you know, kind of the first sessions, if you want to get started, you know, hop on and hang out with me for a couple of times. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just guide you how to get started, but I'm also going to point you in the right directions of like which teachers you should be, you know, uh, visiting and, and talking to. Okay, so that is uh, that is me in a nutshell. I uh, I started out wholesaling and rehabbing ten years ago in uh, well 20, 2011. Yeah, so yeah, so ten years ago, and um, and then when I got pregnant, I transitioned over to um, to storage, and I've been investing in self storage ever since. So I uh, I understand the concepts of residential and commercial development, and I typically lean towards commercial, uh, but um, but I can help guide you in any way on both on kind of both sides. Okay, let's get started. How to choose the market, right? How do we figure out where we're going to start? So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's happening, obviously, in the world. Uh, you know, uh, the truth is, is that, you know, this, uh, the, the, um, the economy has, you know, been up and down over the last couple of years. We all know this, right, due to COVID. And um, we don't know really, honestly, when it's going to end. Everybody keeps saying, you know, it's going to end this year, then it never ends, right? So the truth is, is that it is what it is. And there's no reason to stop and wait for anything else. You know, there's, there's no reason to, you know, to stop and wait for COVID to be over before you start investing in real estate. All right, that's my point, is that uh, even in the downtimes of real estate investing, there's always, always opportunity. And even in the uptimes of investing in real estate, there's always, always opportunity, right? You just have to learn how to go with the market, right? You really have to understand the real estate investing market and the world and the economy and the, you know, the United States economy and the world economy, and really kind of just educate yourself on kind of how all that works in a nutshell. You don't have to know a lot, but in a nutshell. and um, and keep an eye on it. But um, for me personally, uh, I, I am the type of investor that just, uh, you know, understands the concept that, you know, in, in every single type of market out there, there's going to be an opportunity to make money, right? And so we want to keep that in mind as we go through which markets that we want to invest in. All right. And, and also another thing I wanted to just bring up real fast is, you know, the difference between, in the economy, the difference between a V, a v or a U-shaped recession. So we are going into recession. And uh, over the course of the last, uh, you know, of the last couple of years, um, as you can see from 2000 to 2020, we did have up and ups and downs in the market. We had mostly ups, as you can see, but you have like you have these kind of you have these kind of like recession periods right here that are grayed out, and um, and um, you know even like for instance in two thousand and eight, right when we thought that the worst was happening ever right? It was nothing compared to what's what happened over the last couple of years. And actually what is going to happen now, that doesn't mean it's a bad, it's, it's good, you know, it's, it's going to be a bad, uh, you know, time period. Just what that means is that there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And, uh, and I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited. 
so I hope that you guys are gearing up and educate. Now you guys are in the right place right now because you are educating yourself on really how to get started and what to do. But the um, the purpose of this slide is just to show you that there is going to be a huge opportunity in the downturn, and um, and it, uh, and you should be preparing for it. All right. Another thing I wanted to point out too was um, if I could get this question there. Yeah. Um, what kind of impact do you expect of the coronavirus to have on the housing market, right? And this is a good question to just put into the chat, right? Out of this, let's do a poll, you know, out of, um, you know, out of this question, which one do you think, what, what do you think is going to happen to the housing market? What has happened to the housing market? Do you think that the coronavirus has had a good uh, effect, a bad effect, or no effect on the housing market, right? This poll was conducted last year, and um, I thought it was very, very interesting to see what people were actually thinking uh, was going to happen to the, ho the housing market. So do me a favor and put into the chat, uh, you know, what do you think the impact of the coronavirus has? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Or no, yeah, has no, has had no effect at all? And also, what do you think in the future? You know, you could always put this out too. So, um, you know, personally for me, when um, when I think of when I think of like, and I look back over the past couple of years, actually the past the past couple of years for me have have been the most successful years I've ever had, honestly. And uh, and I can't wait for the future because every single year it gets better and better, right now. That doesn't that doesn't go to and that doesn't mean that I haven't you know I haven't uh, done anything. What that means is that I've really worked you know I've worked a lot harder to make sure that you know I can get the deals that I need to get done, right? So um, you know you just have to know that the impact of the coronavirus um, really the answer to this question stems on you know and what's what's happening in this pool just stems on the type of personality that you have. Right. So for me personally, you guys tell me what you think. But for me personally, I think the impact of the coronavirus has had a good effect on the market. Right. Personally, for me, over the last couple of years, I've had the most successful years that, I've, that I could have had. Right. And but if you talk to a lot of people, they're going to say that the market, you know, coronavirus is ruining the market. Um, you know, and I really feel like the best, you know, the best investors truly understand that um, really the market is the market and how you get out there and work and grind and do your thing and do your deals and, and, and get out there and talk to sellers and owners that's really going to have that's really going to create the impact that you that that you're going to that you're going to want so so for me personally the coronavirus has had a good effect and I'm looking forward to the years ahead and I'm super excited about what's going to happen um, and I hope that you guys just have the same mindset that I do, that the coronavirus is just a, uh, is just a, you know, a tick in the, in the time of history, but we as people, we are resilient and we can get out there and we can create the life that we want just as long as we don't give up and we keep moving forward. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, so obviously we all know that, you know, uh, the real estate market has changed. How has it changed? Let's get, let's try. How does it not have that now that it has changed? How do we choose the market that we want? Right. So obviously it's different. What I want to tell you and, and what I want to give you as advice is, um, let's see, I have this. Yeah, what I want to give you as advice is that the truth of the matter is that you have no idea what's going to happen. All right. All you know is that you need to be doing the best that you possibly can. And my personal advice is you do not want to stop looking for properties. You do not want to stop contacting con uh, sellers. You do not want to give up. All right. I know that passive income is the best, uh, the best way to build long term wealth. And I know that I know that we're going to get through this. Right. So I'm not here telling you that I have all the answers to everything. All I know is that I'm not going to let something like the coronavirus or omnivirus or whatever you want to call it nowadays. I'm not going to let that stop myself from creating the life that I want. 
And what should you be doing right now, right? What you should be doing right now. This is what you should be doing. First, you need to be getting your credit in order. You need to really be working on getting your credit in order and getting some cash if you have cash. Now, if you don't have cash, guess what? You can get cash from, you know, from lenders and from partners. In fact, I mean, all I, you know, all the storage facilities that I have, all the properties that I've ever bought, I'm borrowing other people's money in order to purchase them. All right. Uh, I've done $20 million in transaction in the last couple of years. And I've borrowed money from, um, from, you know, I've borrowed money to do all that. All right. So if I can do it, you guys can possibly, you guys can do that too. What you have to do is you have to learn how to, um, to find money, right? Learn how to raise money, learn how to talk to lenders and, uh, you know, private lenders, hard money lenders, and get your money in order. Because the truth is, is that in order to invest in real estate, you got to have money, right? So um, let's make sure that we get our money in order so we can, especially in the, when it comes to the downturn over the next couple of years, you'll be ready to purchase, okay? Get all of your marketing in order, right? Whether or not you want to wholesale or rehab or buy rental properties or, you know, do no, notes or land or whatever you're interested in, right? You've got to start getting your marketing in order. The truth is, is that if you are not talking to sellers, if you are not talking to owners of properties, you are not going to be able to find deals, right? It is hard right now to find deals on the MLS. It's hard right now to find deals online. You have to be able to talk to the owners. So you have to get your marketing and the owner. Faced, your job is to get meetings with owners. That's your job, to get meetings with owners, all right? To get your money in order and to get meetings in, in, with, with owners, okay? Um, above all, don't, you know, don't stop educating yourself about learning how to invest in real estate. The whole purpose of REI USA is to put you in front of all of these amazing investors so that you can educate yourself um, and uh, learn what you should be doing. Essentially, key, think of REI USA as like kind of like you know small group coaching sessions, right? That's what we're here to do: is really guide you and uh, tell you exactly what to what to do. The sessions are not there's not a lot of people in the sessions, um, you know. So you can ask the teachers any questions that you want. And I always tell everybody that I talk to that comes into the um, the beginner session, I always tell them. You really have two questions that you should be asking uh, the uh, the teachers every time that you see them is how do you how do you find the money to do all the deals that you're doing right so ask them that so they can tell you how they find their money and then the second question you should be asking teachers is um, what marketing are you doing to find the deals right what marketing are you doing and how are you finding your money so over the course of the next couple of weeks as you get back into the training sessions and start going to all these, you know, these small group calls, ask your teachers that so they can tell you what they're doing. And again, you're in the right place. All right. You're like, I, I keep, I, I'll keep telling everybody you're in the right place. I love REI USA. The underlying purpose of REI USA is the secret to living is giving. And these people, these teachers, essentially, they're not getting paid. All they're doing is just teaching out of the kindness of their heart, right? They're just teaching out of the kindness of their heart. Because what I wanted is I wanted to put a, um, I wanted to put a platform out there where everybody has access to, um, to, to, to investors and doesn't have to pay, you know, doesn't have to go broke in order to, to learn how to invest. All right, so that's really the purpose of REI USA. So take advantage of them. Like I said, I've done um, I've done a lot of transactions over the last uh, ten years, and I'm also here to help you and guide you. This is my family, right? This is uh, this is me and my daughter Lillian and my husband Pete. We have a little tiny house there that we use, uh, that we have. This is our tiny house that we used to live in. We actually just sold it. We moved into an RV and now we travel full time and we invest in real estate. Right. Isn't that like the dream? 
right? To be able to do whatever you want, whenever you want. So we travel, we travel in an RV and, um, and invest in um, self-storage. Here's a picture of me in an old rehab I did back in the day. And here's another picture of me in, in an abandoned storage facility that I found, uh, just driving for storage. And then of course, real fast, I wanted to get into the three types of markets. One of uh, so growth, stable, and declining. When you are when you are looking for markets, you want to be in either a growing market or a stable market. You do not want to be in a declining market, right? So, um, how do you find how do you find out whether or not markets are growing, stable, or declining? There are a lot of different uh, websites out there that you can look up what the statistics are. Uh, and uh, see, and you know, check to see uh, which uh, what what how the how the market is doing. Personally, I use Radius, um, but you can use uh, there's like so many different ones. So make sure you Google to check what the statistics are. Another uh, another thing that you want to look at when you identify the right market is is uh, these things: population. Is is it a growing? Like we said, is it growing the population or is it declining? job growth, right? Is there job growth in the area? And the truth is, is with coronavirus right now, everybody's leaving the cities, right? Everybody's leaving. So what we want to do is we want to check to see where is everybody going? Which areas are everybody grow going to, right? Also, you want to check things like what, how long has the properties been on, on the market, right? Uh, how, how much affordable housing is the, in the area? The cap rates, you know, what are the cap rates in the area, right? And this is definitely for commercial property. You want to be looking at cap rates to see is it, you know, are they low or high cap rates? What are the landlord laws? We already know that, but there's some areas that are really struggling with this. And are the downtowns growing, right? Are they getting revitalized? If you know some areas where downtowns are getting revitalized, that is a good area to be focusing on. Right. So when you're determining determining the market that you want to be in, you really want to be looking at things like what can you afford? Right. What type of financing are in the market? Uh, what types of financing are out there for that area? You know what researching the local market? What are the cap rates in that area? What how much are the mortgage payments in that area? OK, so are they super high or are they not super high? And then also, you know, what kind of a profit can you make on your deal, right? So obviously more desirable places are going to be more expensive, but you have to be able to make sure you can buy the price right, you know? So sometimes it's better to be in an affordable housing area just because, you know, you might make a little bit more money on the back end. And really, you know, you just have to check it out and see. And the rental rates. Who's buying still? Oh yeah, I was going to ask this question. If you guys can put it into the chat, what you think. Right now, who is buying and will be buying over the next couple of years? What types of people? Can anybody guess what types of people over the next couple of years are going to be buying houses? This is something to keep in mind when you're out looking for property. And the answer is millennials, millennials, right? The millennials are buying more houses and in anybody, John, anybody, any generation out there. And they want, they want houses that have, you know, uh, offices. They want to be able to be virtual. You know, they want to be able to be, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, they want to be, you know, they want, they have a different type of way of looking at housing now. Gone are the old school days, right? Who's not buying right now? Which type of person is not buying right now? That is the next question. And the answer is the ages 75 to 84. So essentially the elderly are staying put. They're staying put. They're not selling their houses, right? So, you know, when you think about that, like, you know, when you think, oh, I need to buy a list and Karen's going to, and actually Karen is our list broker for REI USA. She's going to be speaking next, which is going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, she can attest to this, but like, you know, ages 75 to 84, maybe you don't want a list for, for that age, right? Because, uh, you know, they may not be selling as much as like, you know, some sort, you know, some other list that's out there, right? So you want to keep that in mind that these people right now are staying put. They are not selling their properties. Okay. Also, finally, you can see Texas, Florida, and Arizona are the fastest growing uh, states in the country right now. 
the highest growth is in, uh, is Idaho. Oh, sorry, it's the, the population increase is in Texas, Florida, and Arizona. The highest growth increase increases are in Idaho, Nevada, and Arizona. States that lost most people are New York and Illinois. Yeah, and I would say probably California is gonna be coming up there a little pretty soon in California. Highest new home construction cities are Dallas and Houston. I mean, Dallas is booming right now. Atlanta, the Atlanta growth is in the top 10. The top city growth is Boise right now. Isn't that interesting? It's like this random city that nobody thought about. And then now in the last couple of years, we're like, okay, Boise is growing. Colorado and Austin are second in growth. And many people are moving to no income tax states. We, we just became domiciles of Texas, actually just for that reason. We are now <clears throat> residents of Texas just because we don't want to be paying, we're paying taxes. Okay. All right, see, everybody's thinking that way. We're all thinking that way. We live in an RV. Essentially, we're traveling around and trying to figure out where we want to, we want to settle. That's the whole purpose. And people are doing that. Lots and lots of people are doing that. Okay, how to get your market, how to get to know your market. Okay, so first you want to visit. You want to drive for star storage. I am huge on dri driving for storage. <laughs> I'm huge for driving for storage, but driving for dollars is exactly the same thing, right? Use Dill Machine. If you're interested, use Dill Machine. We have a great discounted rate with as an REI USA member. So you can get out there and you can uh, drive for dollars, take pictures of your, uh, of your property and then send a letter to them right in that app. All right, or find a boots uh, on the ground person. If you want to, if you live in Austin, in Austin, Texas, and you want to invest in Florida, all you need is a boots on the ground person to be able to help you to go look at properties. Okay. In fact, we, as I said, we travel in our RV and um, we, uh, we, all of our facilities are in Georgia and Florida, and we never go to any of our facilities. All we do is we just have boots on the ground people to manage all that for us. Okay. So you can truly be virtual if you want to be. All right, good. So I hope that kind of gets you started on the day. Uh, again, this is um, all of the teachers for REI USA, and there's 25 of us here to help you get started. I'm looking forward to spending the next two days with you. And again, I teach on um, the, the every other Tuesday. I teach the beginner real estate investing uh, group, and I also teach self storage 101. So come hang out with me if you are interested in learning those uh, learning those two topics thank you for listening to this episode of rei usa let these golden pieces of advice clear your path towards thriving real estate success and start making those amazing financial opportunities work for you if you like this episode and want to get more of these valuable secrets be sure to subscribe to the show at www.rei-usa.com leave a rating too and share with your friends until next time.